We have been doing some top ten lists. We will continue that. In the end of the show today, we're going to talk about the teams that overachieved in 2021. Post-game win expectancy is a metric that is done by Bill Connolly, by uh, Parker Fleming, of course, at Stats of War, uh, collegefootballdata.com. That's where I'm actually getting mine from. Looking at the post-game win expectancy for each game from last season and then tallying it all up and seeing exactly who had the most wins over expected, right? We'll start with number 10, Ball State. Ball State went 6 and 6 last year. Their post-game win expectancy said that they should have won 4.17 games. That is a 1.83 uh wins over expected. That is they shouldn't have even made a bowl game and yet there they were sitting at 6 and 6. Uh these are regular season records by the way. I didn't toss bowl games in here. Number 9 is Purdue. Uh Purdue went 8 and 4. Their post-game win expectancy said that they should have won 6.02 games. That's 1.98, so almost two full games. Number eight, surprisingly, Alabama. They played 13 games, and the reason I'm putting the 13th game is the SEC championship game. Uh, Their post-game win expectancy said that they should have had 9.96 wins, so they were 2.04 wins over expected here. Number seven is Baylor. Now, they played 13. They went 11-2 and in those, and their post-game win expectancy was 8.55, so 2.45 wins over expected here. Eastern Michigan went 7-5 and five in the regular season, and they were 2.47 because they should have gone uh, 4.53. I mean, 4.53 wins, so 4.5 wins. Yeah, okay. Oklahoma, another one that won 10 games, uh, and their post-game win expectancy said 7.47. That's 2.53 there. Number four is Wake Forest, another one with 10 wins, and 7.45 was their uh, post-game win expectancy. And they, uh, you know, 2.55, that's uh, that's pretty ridiculous. It is what makes me a little squeamish on my expectations for the Demon Deacons this year. UTSA, another one of those, 12-1 and one in the regular season along with the CUSA championship game. Post-game win expectancy said 9.18, so they were 2.82 wins over expected. Iowa, 10-3 and three last year. Their post-game win expectancy said 6.73 wins. So instead of 10 wins, they probably should have only had about 7, uh, maybe 6 in some cases. So, you know, there's a reason why Iowa's win total is around 7 or 7.5 right now for this coming season. But yeah, 3.27 wins over expected there. The next one. This might make Florida fans a little little worried, or it could make them believe that, oh, we, we definitely hired a good coach. Billy Napier, 12-1 and one as the head coach at Louisiana last season. His postgame win expectancy was 8.29 and 4.71. That is 3.71 wins over expected. Nearly four more wins than they were supposed to have, based on just the stats, right? Uh, you can go read more about this over at collegefootballdata.com. But post-game win expectancy tells you basically what percentage of the time you would win that game with the exact same stats. There were multiple games that they probably should have lost last year at Louisiana and yet found a way to win. And so I I think that that's a, a pretty big deal. And the way that Louisiana played last year was they they hung in games with teams that they absolutely should have beaten and they let those teams hang around too long. But when they played against good competition, App State, uh, et cetera, they showed up and, and handled their business. So, you know, it was a strange, strange season for Louisiana last year. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.